Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2008, it's a Mercury, a Grand Marquis. The problem we have is that the, uh, the, it doesn't blow anything out through the vents whatsoever. Not high, not low, none of these speed controls on the fan work. So there's a couple of things we're going to need to check to make sure that we replace the correct part. Uh, a couple of items that could be the, 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 the most common failures is going to be the resistor goes bad frequently. Uh, the resistor burns out, the main control unit in the dashboard burns out, and uh, the most common piece to burn out is the, uh, the blower motor itself. So I'm going to show you how to diagnose what the problem is. You know what, let me bring you in there, I'm going to show you what it does or does not do first and then I'm going to show you how to diagnose it and we'll get this job done and out the door. So come on inside, let's see what it does or doesn't do. Okay, now what? let's close the door so you can hear what it does. Right, well, the bell should stop ringing in a second. As you can hear, it's absolutely nothing. All right, so, uh, all right, let's go outside, and we're going to check the easiest thing first. We're going to check the blower motor first. The resistor is actually up inside the, uh, the glove compartment area, up inside the, uh, the heater box itself, but uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our power probe, and we're going to check for power and ground just to make sure that we have power going to the, uh, to the blower motor. You always want to start with the most basic, the basic things first. You never want to assume that it's a problem until you've actually gone in here and checked just to make sure. I have a lot of oxidation on the battery, but that's not here for that today. Okay, so we're going to take our test light now, and now I just want to point this out. The, the key is in the on position, the fan is in the, in the uh, full uh, high speed. So let's take this out first. We unplug it, and we're going to check power and ground right here. Now you can see that lights up green, that means we have ground. And you can hear that, you see that lights up red, that means we have power there also. So we have ground and we have power, that means this fan should be turning, because it doesn't turn. Okay, so, okay, so now that we, uh, we know we have power and we know we have ground, that blower motor should be working. So obviously something inside the motor itself burnt out, but if you did not have power go into the, uh, the motor or you did not have ground go into the motor, you need to backtrack the electrical wiring diagram to find out where the failure is. Like I said, the resistor is very common in this particular vehicle too, but uh, we don't have to worry about that today. We're just going to change this motor. So let me make a phone call, let me get the motor, and I'm going to show you how to replace this with the, with the new one. All right? Okay, this motor is a fairly easy motor to do. You can see where it has four screws here, here, down here and one down there. Just watch you don't drop that one screw down there because it's in a kind of a tight spot. All right, so first thing you do is you push in on that tab and you pull this off. And we're just going to put this off to the side for now so it doesn't interfere with anything we're doing down there. This piece here comes off like this and it's just a little rubber band around it like this. We just pull this off like that and then this pulls right out of the motor and we will need to use this on the new motor. Alright, so let me get in here. We're going to take these screws out and we'll pull that motor out. Okay. Now just so you know, these bolts, they're, uh, they're probably uh, 5 sixteenths. So I'm going to get in there with a, with a... You don't really need a real heavy duty ratchet. This is just a driver handle and we should be able to get these screws out. I always do the more difficult one first. The reason I do that is because the motor itself is not going to be moving around and it will not be in the way. I mean, it won't be bouncing around and I won't, I won't lose that, um, um, 
that bolt by accident. All right, the rest of them we can take out with just the driver handle. Okay, this we just push off to the side like that. And the motor comes right out like this. Now, remember we talked about that squirrel cage? We need to change this squirrel cage. Oh, I could feel this is tight actually. When I spin it, it feels, feels, feels fairly tight. We're going to take the squirrel cage off here. We're going to pop that clip off right there, and then we're going to take this cage off of that motor. So let's go over on the bench, and we'll continue on. Okay. Here. So what we need to do now is we need to switch over this squirrel cage. As you can see, the new one does not come with the cage. I will point this out to you too. It also comes with a new clip like this. This clip, if you lose it, you're going to have a problem trying to find it, so be, be very careful with it. The way you take this off, I always take a scribe, something pointy like this. Now, this clip doesn't matter. We're going to be throwing this clip away anyway. But I usually get underneath here with a scribe and I just push up, just like that. And it takes the clip right off. Now, that came off pretty easy. But what I do with the scribe is I get underneath there and I push it up and that bends that little tab up and we get that off. Now, what we do now is we take this, this cage here. Well, let's see first. Okay, this one is going to come off. It's moving. It's a little tight. So what you could do is just tap lightly. Just like that to get it to move. And this one actually came off. But if it didn't come off, what you would do is you would get in here. If this was on here really tight, If this was on here really tight, you would just take this center punch, put it on the top right here, you hold it up like this, and you have your assistant tap on the top, and it'll pop right out. But it came out fairly easy. Okay? Okay, so we'll put this off to the side for now. And like I said, we're not going to use the old clip, we're going to use the new one. And as you can see, this can only go on one way. You see how the one side is square? So we'll take the fan, uh, the squirrel cage, put it over the top, push it all the way down, and then you take your lock clip, put it on the top, and you just push it down until it comes in contact with it like that, and now it locks the, the squirrel cage onto the motor itself. And you see this one turns a lot easier. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this piece back on here. You could put it on here, or you could put it on in the car. I prefer to put it on here. And the way you do that is it goes around the motor, like that. And then you just take this and you push it in, just like that. See? That's the way it goes. So now we're ready to put this back into the car. So, uh, all right, let's get back over to the car and we'll put this back together now. Now remember, the square part here was down on the bottom, so that's the way you need to put it back in. And you want to line this up to the little lock tabs. It has a little, little pin right here. You want to put it over that pin. So now, this pin and this pin are lined up to hold this where it belongs. And now we're going to take the screws, we're going to put this bracket back over the top where it was, and we're just going to catch these screws in here lightly by hand, right? Same thing down here. And the last one we're going to catch is down there. Be careful you don't drop it. Okay. And now we'll tighten everything up.
remember, you're only screwing into plastic, so you don't want to over tighten it. Whenever I work on these, I always use a quarter inch because you don't want to over tighten anything and break it by accident. Or strip it out. Okay, that's it, nice and tight. We're going to put our piece back on here today. And now we're going to take this. Now you, you'll notice this is a redesign where this has the electrical plug separate. The other one plugged into the side of the motor, so we'll just make sure it locks in place. Like that. Okay. And now if we did our job correctly, we should go inside and we, uh, we should have uh, the, uh, the fan running. So let's go inside and see what happens. the door so you can hear it. I'm going to turn the key on. And you can hear it already. That's it. Everything works perfectly. All right, so you, if, your resi if your resistor was bad, you may have only high speed and low speed, and you may not have the middle speeds, but in this case, the resistor is okay as well. It works perfectly. All right, let's shut this off. Get our tools out of there, and we're all okay, set. So that's it. We're all done. That's the motor, and if you look very closely, well, I need my glasses to see this better, but if you look very closely, you can see all this debris inside here. And if you smell the motor through there, you'll smell a burnt smell, which is what, what happened here. This, this motor burned out internally. So, all right, um, like I said, don't get ahead of yourself. Check your power, check the ground, make sure that everything is okay. And um, that's it, you're all set. So any questions or comments, or you want to talk to me about anything, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody about anything. As always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.